Since the Iranian Revolution in 1979, Iran has become synonymous with human rights violations. Among these is the bizarre yet horrifying practice known as white room punishment or white torture. As reported by Amnesty International, the process involves obliterating a person's sense of perception and comfort. Human spirit is broken by dulling all the human senses such as touch, sight, hearing, smell and taste. Prisoners are locked in a windowless cell with white coloured walls. They are fed white rice on white disposable plates and their clothing is completely white also. The cell is completely silent and continuous neon lights illuminate the room. The lighting is also designed not to cast any shadows in the cell. Surfaces are also given a smooth finish to dampen the sensation of touch. Prisoners are also forbidden to speak to anyone, including guards. If they need to use the toilet, they are not allowed to verbalise this, but have to slide a white piece of paper under the door to alert guards. Prison guards in turn wear muffled footwear to further emphasise the prisoner's sensory deprivation. Many prisoners in a bid for freedom confess to fabricated charges, even incriminating other innocent victims. This leads to an everlasting sense of shame when released. As you may expect, the true pain of this method of punishment and mind control is its devastating effect on mental health. Former victims can experience a multitude of symptoms, including anxiety disorders, phobia or persistent and extreme fears, frustration, depressive episodes, paranoia and scepticism. Hallucinations and a complete mental break can also occur. As the circadian rhythm is drastically altered by the lack of a night and day cycle, a prisoner can also develop severe insomnia. This continues after release along with extreme nightmares. This can go on for months and even years. Nothing but white, white noise, white lights, white walls and white food. Complete and utter isolation, destroying all concept of time and reality. PTSD is also a reoccurring theme as victims, when or if released, avoid people and places that can trigger traumatic memories. Therefore, the punishment not only affects the victim, but the victim's family and communities also. A quote from activist survivor Kianush Sanjari reads, I feel that solitary confinement, which wages war on the soul and mind of a person, can be the most inhuman form of white torture for people like me who are arrested solely for defending citizens' rights. I only hope the day comes when no one is put in solitary confinement to punish them for the peaceful expression of his ideas. Barbi says he spent 17 months in solitary confinement, trapped in a tiny cell not much bigger than a bathtub. They kept the light on 24 hours a day. You have no information about the outside, you have no contact with the outside, and after a while you become mentally disoriented. This kind of torture doesn't affect you physically, but it does affect you mentally and emotionally. It, it can drive you crazy. Yes. The US government under George W. Bush was also accused of this method of interrogation in Guantanamo Bay. The British government also used sensory deprivation enhanced interrogation techniques when tackling the IRA. Many times prisoners were held without trial. Venezuela have also been accused of the practice. <laughs> 